We're going to look at three log laws that we can use to quickly simplify or evaluate an expression. Because logarithm means exponent, you may have guessed, they come from the exponent laws. We know already if we're multiplying two powers with the same base, we keep the base the same and we add the exponents. If we're dividing two powers with the same base, we keep this base the same and we subtract the exponents. Similar to that, we're going to develop the three log laws we'll be using from those exponent laws. Let's take a look at our first log law. So going back to what we know about exponent laws, we know that if we're multiplying two powers with the same base, we keep the base the same and we add those exponents together. Logarithm means exponent. So this first term, two cubed, has a value of eight. The exponent on that base of two that gives me a value of eight is three. The exponent on base two that gives me a value of four, which is what this two squared is equal to, is going to be an exponent of two. Now we add the exponents together, we get a value of five. In our first log law, we can see that if the base happens to be the same, we can add those two exponents together, and that's the same as if we would have multiplied the arguments. So for example, this one log base two, eight times four. If I rewrite this using a log law, I'm going to take my argument because we're multiplying that together and I'm going to write it as two separate addition pieces. The exponent on base two that gives us eight is three. The exponent on base two that gives us four is two. And just to show you that it is equivalent, we know eight times four is 32. I purposefully chose numbers that we could could do mentally. Um, some of them you'll need to use the log laws because there just won't be a whole number. But the exponent on base 2 that gives us 32 is 5, so we can see that those two sides are equivalent. To further show you that this is going to work, let's take an argument of 30, and I want you to think of two numbers that we could multiply together to get 30. And there's a few options. We could go, for example, with 5 and 6. Okay, so let's take a look at this. I'm going to put in here um, the logarithm of 30 and we're going to get a value and then on the other side we're going to put in the logarithm of 5. Now you have to close that bracket. We're going to add to it the logarithm of 6 and again you have to close that bracket and you can see that those values are equivalent. What else could multiply to get 30? Well we could also go 10 and 3. So let's take the logarithm of 3 plus the logarithm of 10. Now notice these are all common logarithms. They all have a base of 10. That's what allows me to put them in the calculator. And for every argument where we find those two factors, we can see when we add the logarithms of those two numbers, we're always getting the same value. Okay, so let's now try the logarithm of 21. What two numbers could we multiply together to get 21? And again, you have a few choices. Let's try three and seven just to see if the value is equivalent. So we're gonna take the logarithm of 21. So the exponent we put on base 10 to get 21 is a little over one. And then let's take the log three, close the bracket, add it to the log of seven, and you can see that those values are equivalent. Our second log law comes from the division of two powers with the same base, where we know we subtract those exponents. So because the base is 2, the exponent on base 2 that gives us a value of 16, which is what 2 to the four power 4 is equal to, is 4. The exponent on base 2 that gives us a value of 2, 2 to the power of 1 is 2, is 1. We subtract those exponents and we get a value of 3. So in our second log law, if we subtract those exponents, keeping in mind the base has to be the same, we'll get the same value as if we were dividing those arguments. So for example, I took this one here and using my log law, I wrote this as the subtraction of two separate pieces with the same base. I know the exponent on base two that gives me 64 is six. I know the exponent on base two that gives me four is two. Subtracting those exponents gives me a value of four. Just to show you that it is going to be equivalent, we know 64 divided by four is 16. We also know the exponent on base two that gives us a value of 16 is four. So we can see that those sides are equal. There's our second log law. Okay, let's take a look at this. There is no whole number that we can put on base 10 that will give us a value of nine. So we know the log of nine is going to be something irrational. And if we put this in our calculator, we can see it's a little bit less than one. 
Using our second log law, what are two numbers we can think of that would divide to give us a quotient of 9? And again, there's multiple choices. I don't know. Let's try 81 divided by 9 is 9. Just to check that the value is equivalent, let's go the log of 81. And again, remember, you have to close that bracket uh, there because we're going to enter something else after. And you can see those equal are equal. What else could divide to get a value of 9? Well, let's try 90. Again, close the bracket. And you can see if we take the logarithm of any two numbers that divide to get 9, subtract them, then we're always going to have an equivalent value. And that brings us to our third and final log law. So let's take a look at how we get this log law. We know if we have a power raised to another power, we keep the base the same and we multiply those exponents. So 3 times 2 gives me an exponent of 6. Now, if I'm taking a look at the exponent here, 2 to the power of 3 has a value of 8. So I know that the exponent we put on base 2 that gives me a value of 8 is 3. If I multiply that by the second exponent, then we get a value of 6. So when we're dealing with this one, if we have an argument that's a power, we can take that exponent and we tend to move it out to the front, and we're going to multiply that by the second exponent, and we'll have something that's equivalent. So we're going to move that exponent down to the front, and we're going to multiply it by that second exponent. So if we have something like this, because we're going to start using this when we solve logarithmic equations, I'm going to take, I, I see that my argument is a power. I can take that exponent and I can move that out in front. So we're going to have 3 times log base 2 to the 4. And now this is a smaller number to deal with than this originally was. I may not know the exponent to put on 2 that gives me that value because I may not know what 4 cubed is. But I do know the exponent we put on base 2 to get 4 is 2. So this becomes 3 times 2, which gives me a value of 6. All three of those log laws are on your formula sheet. You do not have to memorize them, but you have to be able to use them. In each of these cases, we're going to write the expression as a single logarithm, so that means one logarithm, and then we're going to evaluate. Remember, that means get the value of the answer, and we're going to do it with no technology, so you can ditch your calculators and see how we do this. Okay, so first of all, we know that there is no exponent that is a whole number. We can put on base 6 to get a value of 18. Just like there's no exponent that's a whole number that we can put on 6 to get a value of 2. So we're going to recognize we have the same base. Your log laws only work if the base is the same. If we're adding two of those together with the same base, then we know we can use that log law where we keep the base the same and we multiply the arguments together. Now we know that 18 times 2 is 36, and now we can evaluate this because the exponent we put on base 6 to get a value of 36 is 2. 6 squared gives us 36, and there you go, you got the answer. Okay, let's try the next one. So this time, again, you there's clearly no exponent. We can put on 2. That's a whole number to get a value of 3. So you recognize we are subtracting two logarithms with the same base. So we can use a log law where we keep that base the same and we divide those arguments. So keeping that base the same, if we go 48 divided by 3, we know that's 16. And we know that the exponent on base 2 that gives us a value of 16 is 4. So there you go, you got the answer. In my next one, there's no exponent we can put on base 6 to get 9. That's a whole number. So I recognize that my bases are all the same. I am adding these two and I'm subtracting the last piece. That means we can multiply those arguments and divide that last one. So I'm going to write this as a single logarithm, keeping the same base. I'm going to multiply my 9 times 8 and I'm going to divide that by 2. So we know 9 times 8 is 72. 72 divided by 2 is 36. The exponent on base 6 that gives us a value of 36 is 2.
In our next one, we can see that these are both common logarithms. They have a base of 10. There's no exponent I can put on 10 that gives me five, just like there's no exponent we can put on 10 that gives us two that are whole numbers. So we can use that log law where we take this number in front and move it up to the place of the exponent. So let's try that and see what happens. So I'm going to take that two and put it as the exponent on the five. I'm gonna take that second leading coefficient of two and I'm gonna put it on the exponent of that two. Now, we know that five squared is 25, and we know that two squared is four. I still don't have an exponent I can put on base 10 to get 25, nor do I have an exponent that is a whole number that I can put on 10 to get four. So we can use the second log law because we recognize they both have a base of 10, which means we can multiply those arguments together. Let's try that. So we're gonna go 25 times four, which we know is 100. Is there now an exponent we can put on base 10 that gives us a value of 100? And sure enough, the answer is two. Okay, so we have two more examples. Now that you've got the hang of how this works, I want you to pause this video, grab some paper and try these. See if you can practice simplifying them into something where you can get the value of each expression without the use of a calculator. Okay, so fun. So we recognize here we have two logarithms with the same base and we're adding them, which means we can multiply the arguments. We know a quarter of 100 is 25 and now the exponent on base five that gives us 25 is two. This one over here, again, there's no exponent we can put on base four to get two. So I'm going to first of all take this number up front and I'm gonna move it up to the place of the exponent because we know two to the power of five is 32. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna take that coefficient of one third and we're gonna put it as the exponent on the eight. And remember eight to the power of one third, that's the same as the cubed root of eight. We know the cubed root of eight is two and now there is no exponent I can put on base four to get a value of two, that's a whole number. So we can use another log law because we recognize the base is the same. If we're subtracting two logarithms, we can divide the arguments. 32 divided by two is 16, and now the exponent we put on base four that gives us a value of 16 is two. Now at this point, people usually say, oh, it's always two. It's not always two, I promise you. It's just that we tried to come up with ones that you can do mentally, and so two tends to be the number that comes up a lot. But because you've got the hang of this, I'm going to give you two more examples to try, and I promise you the answer won't be two for these ones. Final two that you're going to do today. Now I'm gonna give you one hint. Remember, if you have a radical, you can change any radical into a rational exponent. So the index becomes the denominator and the exponent one on that radicand becomes the numerator. Okay, go for it, pause the video, see how you do. Okay, the first thing I would do is say, if you look at the first one, 49 to the power of five, that's a large number. I don't know mentally what that value is. So I'm gonna say, okay, there is an exponent I can put on seven to get 49. I know that's gonna be two. So let's take this exponent and move it down out front. And now we can just multiply those to get 10 is the value of that expression. Same thing with this one, 27 to the power of 1 fifth. I don't know what that is, but I do know the exponent on base three that gives me 27 is three. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take that exponent and move it out front and now multiply the numerators to get three, multiply the denominators five times one gives me five. And that's the value of that last one. Log laws, they'll make your life simpler. Oh yeah. <laughs>